right, again, Jonah chapter 3. This is something that you really don't get to see much in the Bible. A second chance. Jonah died. He's resurrected. Only Jonah could done what this call can be done. And only Jesus Christ can save. And death didn't stop Jesus Christ. And death has not or is not going to stop Jonah. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Now let's go to chapter 1, verse 2. Scripture with scripture. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Here is his preach. Preaching is a cry out. You read that in the Bible? You're too loud, people tell me. That's exactly what God's called his voice to do. Cry aloud, spare not, lift that voice up like a trumpet. So people come up to you, I'm a Christian, you're just too loud. Don't know what the Bible says. The preaching that I bid thee. Don't go up with uh, Christmas sermons. Don't go up with little lilies. Don't go up with a nice love message. You better preach what you what you are bid to preach. Or you're going to be in trouble. So Jonah arose. He's on the beach. Or, you know, somewhere where the, that fish has vomited him out. And went unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jonah. Now, if had he followed the direction of God, chapter 3, verse 3, would be chapter 1, verse 3. But then again, those sailors got saved. And they lost a lot of goods. It made part of the ship was broken up. Because one man of God disobeyed. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city of three days journey. Now a day's journey in the Bible was plus or minus 12 miles. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. Now it says, now Nineveh was a great city of three days journey. That doesn't really say that the mileage was three days. The city, I don't know. It could have been that too. And Jonah did it in one day, okay? Hey, the Lord put retro rockets on him. He did it to Ezekiel. I mean... It said what? Get 40 days. Clock's ticking. If, there've been three, if it was three days, you already got 37 days. And Jonah began to enter the city in a day's journey. He got there. That's what's important. And he cried, like God told him, and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight words. And you know he's not liking this. That'll be next chapter, Lord willing. He's not doing this because he wants to obey God. He has to obey God. Eight words. It's not a thought out message. If he could have said it in three words, he would have. And got out. 
He is not preaching yet 40 days and then it shall be overthrown in love. We'll study that in the next chapter, Lord willing. I'm in. I'm out. I've done exactly what you told me to do, Lord. And do you know what the state is of Jonah when we finish his book? So, verse 5. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Romans 2.11. Now, Nineveh is a city, right? It's, an, it's a big capital. You want a revival? You got to do what Jonah 3 tells you to do. First of all, you better preach what God bids thee to preach. Now, we just had, a couple weeks ago, we just had Easter, which is not the Bible celebration. All across the world, on Easter, which happened to be Sunday morning, where people, you know, that's the day to go to church, do you think they heard the message of God? Absolutely not. So the people of Nineveh, first of all, you got to, if you want revival, you got to preach what God has bid you to preach. Number two, so the people of Nineveh believe God. Are you going to find a revival in America with people who are going to believe God? What's Hebrews 11 say about faith? You've got about verse six or seven. You got to believe God who He is. You've got to remove the atheism. And you can't do that in America because the Constitution protects them. And when you preach the word, the people will or should believe God. When the word is preached today, they don't believe. And proclaim the fast. They are serious. And Jonah never had an altar call. <clears throat> now all eyes, all eyes closed, all heads down. He walked in. Yet forty days, and none of us shall be overthrown. Probably turn around and walk out. <laughs> oh my God! And I preached about three weeks ago at the the farmer's market I preached about the fear of God you know how many people came for to fear God zilch fasted in America and put on sackcloth itchy kind of dirty kind of get down to ashes and dirt and mud that I am you can't wear that. That's not the fashion. It, it, it won't go with my wardrobe. From the greatest of them, the highest, the richest, the most famed. The ones that have their, na their names and their pictures on a card in a magazine. They have the gold. They own the business. They're the biggie of all the biggies of all the biggies to be biggie to have their name known even to the least of them. The homeless. People who are unknown. Grandma who rocks in her chair in a little house somewhere and helps her, her, uh, her son take care of the children in the house. No, no one even knows her. She's not even known in church. Now this is repentance true. And I'm sorry to say, when I got saved in April 1987, I did not proclaim a fast and I did not put sackcloth on I believe God. 
message was preached to me, thank God, was you're going to hell. And then the gospel. And I believed God. But I'll tell you one of the things I did do. The very next day, I began witnessing to others about Jesus Christ. So there was a fear of God. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh. Now the ruler steps in. I'm trying to read a note I have here. We've reached the president of this nation, the king, the ruler, has gotten hold of the word of God by an angry preacher who's angry because they're Gentiles. So the Gentile king, Cornelius was a well-known man. And his entire house got saved, and Peter did not want to go. And even when the Lord told him, the Holy Spirit, to go with those men, do you think Peter really wanted to go? Come on, we're talking about Peter now. The Lord had to give them the gifts of tongues to tell Peter, hey, they're saved. Get off your attitude. Try the pork tastes good and he arose from his throne he left the Oval Office I don't know what they call it in Russia but left the throne in England and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. Matthew 11, 29. Joel 2, 15. The ruler steps up to step down and get in repentance at the message of God. There is fear. If any president did that today, the media would crucify him. Talk shows would, would clob him. Six women who don't know how to cook and don't know how to take care of a home and take care of husbands would just murder them. And he caused it to be proclaimed. What is the it? Him putting sackcloth in ashes? I don't think so. Verse 3. But we'll look at verse 6. For the word came unto the king. Verse 3. The word of the Lord. The king of Nineveh proclaimed the word of the Lord. If our president did that today. I'd be in glory right now. I'd kill over have a heart attack. Published throughout Nineveh. That would be the town criers. The media they had in their time. He went out to these men and said, Go out there and proclaim what Jonah said about the Lord. Move. Get it out. Like, the red coats are coming. The red coats are coming. No, we're going to be destroyed by God. We're going to be destroyed by God. Everyone put sackcloth on. Everyone fast. There is no eating. There is no drinking. You better repent to that God of Jonah. 
Man, if you open your newspapers tomorrow and you read that in the, in the headlines and nothing else in the newspaper, you think it was April 1st. By the decree of the king and his nobles, that would be the Senate and the House. You think you're going to get them all together to proclaim the word of God? Sure. You've got to get by how many religions are in the House of Representatives? Including Baptists, Jehovah Witnesses, Mormons, uh, Native American Indian beliefs, uh, atheistic beliefs, witchcraft beliefs, and, and Hinduism, and Mormonism, and all the religions. You think that America is just going to go right to one God? Really? When they're taking the Bible out of the college. They've taken Bible out of the public school. They have taken the Bible out of the courthouse. They have taken away God's word. They have taken away the prayer to God. This king of this nation that is a vile nation. It is just a wicked nation that God says, I'm going to destroy you. Repents to God, gets right with God, and publishes the word of God. Let neither man nor beast herd nor flock taste anything. Get the salt lick away. Not even a salt lick. Let them not feed nor drink water. That is the proclamation of the land, the headlines of the newspaper in the daily Nineveh this day. Fast to the God of Jonah. You can't even get Christians to follow the president today. You think the unsaved people are going to do it? I'd love to see President Obama get saved by the Lord Jesus Christ, by the gospel that Christ died for him, was buried and rose again the third day. Because I would love to see Christians... I'd love to see how they would treat him afterwards. As a brethren or keep on mocking it would be a great joke for God to Christians if President Obama got saved. I pray for him and his wife and his children. They're souls. They're going somewhere. Those, those two little girls are going to die one day and go somewhere. I don't want them to go to hell because of what college their parents said, went. I don't want Mrs. Obama to, to, to burn in the lake of fire because she wrote some paper in, in college. I want to see him get saved and do right. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth. The sackcloth guy is probably happy. <laughs> you know what makes Jews angry? Even the New Testament says that they become our enemy. For the gospel's sake, for the word of God. These are heathen ill. Oh, get away from us. You stink like a dog. And they're listening to God. While the nation of Israel right now are going against God in every way they can, in any shape and form, and they're not even doing what God said. And here's this wicked nation that God's going to use to go against Israel. They stand up and say, you know what? Even our beasts are going to get right. Including the dogs that are unclean and the cats. And cry mightily unto capital G-O-D. How's that? That takes away any other opinion that you can get. This king wants to do right by God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. Repentance. 
and from the violence that is in their hands. Notice he does not put it into law. He does not make it a church state. He doesn't say, if you don't do this, your house is going to be a dunghill. You're going to be put in the rags. We're going to cut off. He says, listen, just do it. And the people are so afraid of this king and God. They do it. Well, I guarantee there are some people, you know, didn't. But the majority of this nation obeyed their king and obeyed God. Now, why can't this nation get right under God? Because you can't teach Junior to obey his parents. So he grows up hating the cops. And he grows up hating the judge. And he grows up hating his teacher. And he grows up misdoing this authority. And he can't call anybody sir or ma'am. And specs everybody has to bend down and kiss his little hiney. Instead of getting a belt to it. There is a thing going on in Nineveh. Is the respect of the authority. And Paul tells the Christian. And Peter tells the Christian. You to respect the authority. And when I read my Facebook post. You are not. You are not. You are not giving authority theaters the expect that you're supposed to be giving them. And Paul and Peter has the worst Roman ruler, the worst ruler that could be, that was killing Christians. The big word today is, re is repentance and reverencing, honoring. And from the violence, do you read, was it, is it Genesis 8 or 9, when God said to Noah, there is this great violence here? I'm going to wipe them all out. Like he's done, like he said in chapter 3 of Jonah, we're going to wipe them all out. Only eight people were saved. Eight people. And here we are, Jonah chapter 3, we are in the same story, just a little city this time. And there's violence like it was in Genesis chapter 9, 8 or 9. And the whole entire city says, let's get right. So it's possible. Who can tell if God will turn and repent? That's a bold statement for a heathen guy to make. Here is a king who does not know God telling his people that that almighty God is going to destroy us. But if we do something, if we get right, if there's anything that we can do to get right before him, maybe he'll say he's sorry and turn away from his fierce anger for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes should not perish that we perish not scripture is scripture and he doesn't even probably know where he'll go if he were to die lost they may not even know about hell Jeremiah 18, 7 through 10. You know the only thing he knows right now? Judgment's coming. I have no idea about heaven. I have no, no idea about hell. Judgment's coming. And it's coming from God. I need to get right. Now, when I got saved, I knew hell's coming. Was the rapture going to happen before or after the church? I had even no idea there was a rapture. I thought before Psalms there was a book called Job, I mean Job. I probably couldn't even find the Gospels without looking in the index. But I do know one thing. 
I knew there was a judgment of God coming for me with hell. For Nineveh, it's we're gonna you're gonna be overthrown. And you got a time period, 40 days. I didn't even get when Brother Joe talked to me, he didn't tell me, you know, you've got so much so much time to live. He didn't tell me that. He says, Listen, when you die, you're gonna go to hell. I don't want to go to hell. And here's the gospel. I fear God and believe. And I'm saved. So when a Christian comes up to you, well, you're not to preach hell. It upsets the people. What else are you going to be saved from? Jesus is my Savior. Okay, Savior, save. What do you save from? Don't preach hell. It, it turns the people away. What do you save from? Imagine a, imagine a, someone comes up to Joe and say, man, don't preach God's going to be angry with this nation. Then why would they need to get right? Why would they need to fear? Why would they need to get sackcloth? If you're not going to tell them about judgment. God told him, he says, you better preach what I bid thee. God told them through Jonah, there's judgment coming, and I'm going to go after you, and I'm going to throw this city in 40 days. And that message got this area, got this city right. What if Jonah would have fluffed up the message? Would there have been a repentance? You know why there's no repentance and no revivals in America today? Because the message is full of sugar. You've got a diabetic church in America causing a fatal disease. Of not preaching the word. Jonah went according to the word. He preached the word. For the word came unto the king. And the king took it. And published the word. Who can tell if God will. Re will will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger. Where did he get his fierce anger from? From the word of Jonah. So how can someone get saved from hell if you don't preach hell? Remember last chapter, chapter 2, he talked about Jonah dying. If Jonah didn't die, then Jesus didn't die. Jonah's preaching his message. If he didn't preach his message the way God told him to, why would they need to get saved? They understood the fierce anger of the Lord and got right and got correct and repented. So when you go and preach peace and love and, and you are defying what God has told you and you are a liar when you're talking to lost people. I believe God says uh, Ezekiel, there is no peace to the wicked, wicked saith the Lord. Pray for the world as some Christian in my face but put. Really? Jesus said in his, his final prayer to his father with his disciples there, I pray not for the world. You got your Bible all messed up, people. They, um, who can tell God will return and repent and turn away from his fierce anger and they, and that we perish not. Jeremiah 18, 7 and 10. They don't want to perish. They don't want to go in 40 days. They want life. April 1987, I did not want to go to hell. I wanted life. So I'm saved. Saved from what? Hell. What else is there to be saved from? And God saw their works. These people, if you read somewhere in the Bible, it says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. These people here are being doers of the word, and Jonah never told them to repent. 
He never gave an altar call. He walks in there, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the entire city gets right and repents before God. And God records, I see their works. Now, this is not works to be saved. They repented. Now they're fasting. And they're animals. Now they've got the sackcloth. You can't tell me, okay, we're going to fast, put sackcloth on. Oh, now we're sorry, Lord. That's, you know it didn't happen like that. You know they got a one-on-one -on -one communication with God. I'm sorry. Got down on their knees and got down in repentance. That they turned from their evil way. That's the work they did. I saw their works, comma, that they turned from their evil way. God didn't look at the sackcloth. He didn't look at the, the fasting. They turned. They got right. And God repented of the evil. Here's that word again. What's the evil? They were a exceedingly great city. They were a great city. Uh, it's in chapter 1. Uh, their wickedness has come up before me. Man, that's, that's a high. When their wickedness has gone all the way up to the third heaven, that's wicked. And the evil would be the judgment. In 40 days, this city is, would be destroyed by God like Sodom and Gomorrah, like the world in, in Noah's time. And God says, no, I'm not going to do it. But see, we got a problem here. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. And Jonah rose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was a three great city, three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter in the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh, Nineveh shall be overthrown. The people are spared, but a hundred or plus or minus years later, in Nahum chapter 3 verse 7, the city is destroyed for the evil. It's still there. The murders are still there unless you, unless you take the people and apply the capital punishment for murder. These group of people can get right. They got right. God said, okay, I'm not going to judge them yet. I'm going to just put it off. These people are spared. But the city will be overthrown. God is okay, just take that 40, 40 days. And I'll just move it to uh, 90, no, 60, whatever it is. 100, it's 100, 100 plus or minus years later, the city is destroyed. Nahum chapter 3, verse 7. That he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Zechariah 2, 13. Zephaniah 2, 3. It was a wicked nation. And it will continue later on to be a wicked nation. But right now, they got right. How long did they stay right? Approximately 99 years, God held off the judgment. I don't know how completely long, but at least 99 years. From a preacher who didn't want to preach to him, chapter 1. From a preacher who died in chapter 2. In chapter 3. He preaches, you know, the very short message, but he preached, and the Gentiles get right. So, here's what you got. You ready for this one? Jonah chapter 2, Jesus dies. We know he died. He's buried, and he arose, right? The Jews are angry. They're persecuting the apostles. 
And while they're doing that, and after they're doing that, because Jonah's mad at him. Jonah still does not want to go. A group of Gentiles come and do what God tells them to do, gets right, and they get saved. How's that? All by Jonah. All by Jesus. A man named Peter, strong, devout Jew, gets saved. He doesn't like Gentiles. He doesn't want anything to do with Gentiles. He's called to the Gentiles. He fights with God. I ain't going to go, man. I ain't not done nothing unclean, God. Holy Spirit tells him to go. And you know he's kicking the stones on the way there. Maybe taking even a slow journey. He gets in this Gentile's house. He's thinking, ooh, cooties. And preaches to them. As far what you see in Acts 10, Cornelius has brought his whole family and all his friends and neighbors. And, G and G Peter proclaims to him the gospel. They hear it. Peter never puts an altar call. And they start getting saved. Pay attention to Gentiles getting saved in the Old Testament or doing what God told them to do, like Naaman the leper, who had new skin when he was done. 